So, like I was saying before, really the only difference between a man and I in a crowd is the fact that um, he wears a hat and I don't. I always have a hat. Besides that, we're pretty much two people of the same proverbial pod. I mean, we both wear black, we both wear shorts. I mean, we both have the same skin and muscle tone. What? I really don't see there's it's there close. being a whole lot of difference. It's close. Oh, then of course, the choice is yours. You can oh. get with this, or you can get with that. You can oh. get with this, or you can get with that. You can oh. get with this, or you can get with that. I think you oh. can get with this, because this is where it's at. Anyway, we're on our sixth episode of This or That, which is pretty Number crazy. Six. It's super cool to see all the comments that you guys have for us to argue back and forth on. So if you guys don't remember, all you gotta do is drop a comment below on what you want us to talk about regardless, this or that, and then we get to pick what we would choose between the two. And of course, if you guys haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe. Absolutely, yeah, we love those lifestyle comments. We like the, this car versus this car, this part versus this part, but the lifestyle, like really kind of crazy, like throwback ones are dope too, so. Yeah. Cool. Definitely dropped something good. And we got our uh, display wheel of the day, which yeah, is the yeah. Cosmos XT005R, yep. R for red, amazing looking wheel. We had Shout to go back to, to our uh, OG guys, because yep. Cosmos was one of the first companies the to start. First, yeah. The first Cosmos wheel they sent. Yeah, very cool. So we're just gonna jump right into it. Jasper, where are we at? Number one. Question one comes from Yuan Kick. Chrome chin or black dot chin? So, I will go first on this one. So for me, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of chrome trim on pretty much anything, but at the same time, I don't like it when people will just do like Plasti Dip trim because I don't think that looks good either. Yeah. I, my pref I would prefer if you're like gonna do the trim, I would do like, uh, like a painted like gloss black or something like that. Sure. I, even like there's like different like purplish, midnight purple tint that you can do. I've done that on my E55 and I absolutely loved it. Um, but yeah, no cr no chrome trim for me. I'm not a big chrome guy. That's just me. It's it's vehicle specific. Like the luxury models have like the chrome trim and it like there's a nice even flow and it looks good. Maybe a little bit of chrome on the wheels, like a chrome lip yeah, on your sure. wheels. If it ties in, I like it, but I know what you mean. It looks, it can look very dated or like old guy Cadillac-ish. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes, yeah, just blacking everything out does look pretty clean. Just, you can't go wrong with it. I just think chrome dates it super hard and the worst part about it is like I have chrome on my own car and it's no other place but the headlights. So like if you look, the only place that that car has chrome trim is the windshield wiper, like toppers. And so the rest of the car doesn't have any chrome, but that one freaking piece of chrome, it's like once you see it, you'll never unsee it. Now I don't know what to do with it. I never even noticed that yeah, actually too. It's crazy. That. It's crazy. Next question, Jeff. Number two. Question two comes from Jeremy H. Fully built motor with stock appearance or stock motor with radical appearance? I already know what you're going to say. Stock or built. So I, I think it's cool. I like the sleeper, as you already know. I just, I, it, I have to have the appearance first and I worry about the horsepower second. I just think it sets the tone for the car. It's like sure. putting on an outfit, you look fresh, <laughs> you got your lip kit, maybe your new wing. See, it's funny though because it's like, because if you put that in the hindsight of like just being like, so I would rather be buff than have nice clothes or have nice clothes and not be buff. It's like, what would you choose? The choice is obvious, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. He's I, more of a performance guy. Yeah, like, I would definitely choose the performance first. Um, just because for me, I it, like, when I, I like the driver experience before I like um, what other people would see in the car. I try to get both if I can, but yeah, I'd, I'd rather do the performance mods first and then do the aesthetics because the only car that I ever owned that was really in your face was the Datsun. Otherwise, the AMG was kind of low key. The Avant that I had was really low key. I had a VR4, a couple of VR4s that, were, that weren't too in your face, you know, but that's just my opinion. If you buy something with significant horsepower off the bat, you're good. But for yeah. most people, you know, the cars are between like Two, 200, 300 horsepower, then I don't know. I would just, I'm gonna pimp it out yeah. first. Number What's three. What's up? What's up? Question Elon Musk. I sell the boots. E36 or E46? On the count of three. Yeah. One, One two, two, three. E46. E46. I messed that up. Damn, we suck. <laughs> um, yeah, you go first. You go first. You go first. So um, I know we're gonna fan Jasper, our intern guy, aka Elon Musk, if you're familiar with the last episode. So he's got an E36. It looks dope, and I like them. They're square. They're boxy, but. 
E46 M3. It's the iconic. All day. When, like when someone, anybody could say M3 and I don't even think of the new ones. I just saw them at the dealership the other day and they looked up M3s, M4s, I looked at all that stuff. But when someone's like, oh man, M3, it's like boom, you just picture yeah. E46. Clean tails, dope headlights. And I almost think it's like a generation thing. And I know that sounds weird because I'm not that old. You're kind of climbing up there, but that's besides the point. The it's. Like when I think when I was younger, it was the E46 that catapulted the M3 sure. to like in your face quality of car. I yep. mean, it was the, on the Xbox, the original Xbox most wanted. I remember dodging, dipping cars, you know, yep, at, the end, yep. at the end of the game, you know, drifting around, crashing things. And uh, that for me always set the bar, that E46 that they had in there. And then everybody that I knew, especially when I was growing up with going 16, 18 year olds, when it talked about M3, it was E46, it was E46, it was E46. Yep. You know, and I know a lot of people love the E36 body style, and a lot of people have been trained to love the E30 body style, but I really don't think that either of those generations had like an organic appreciation like the E46 did, where I just think the E46 was way ahead of its time. It really yeah. was like the ultimate driving machine. It just, it, it looks like if you're gonna do, if I was gonna, if I was gonna build a, a dope track car, an E46, big wing, pandem kit, whatever, yeah. they just, they look cool. And, and I even, I really actually like E46 convertibles, they're mm -hmm. sick. I know some people hate convertibles, but. Yeah, as long as you don't next. get the SMG, but moving on. <laughs> Question four comes from Manny Espinosa. Recaro, Bride, or Sparco seats? So, Recaro, Bride, or Sparco? Recaros would probably be my choice. And the reason yep. that I say that is I've had so much experience in Recaros versus Brides and Sparcos. Um, brides to me have always kind of been a little bit too aggressive and a little bit too much about the styling. And Bride, I just they're a higher price point yeah, um, and I fair. haven't really purchased them that often whereas Recaro's they're in a lot of sport model vehicles they're in a lot of Evos and stuff like that Focus. I think they're in the Focuses yep, too that looks sick. they're in uh, they're just really comfortable and they're good seats like they just do everything that you want to do and for me the most important thing in a car besides obviously performance is how comfortable it is I yeah. used I always bring back the seats in the in the E55 because they had the active bolstering okay. they had the vents it turned it changed it had like 67 different controls Massagers. Huh? Massagers? Yeah, I mean, it had everything. Spoiled. And the seats could do anything. And I could go on a road trip for 10 hours and not have to get out of that car because the seats were so comfortable. And you get in a lot of these new cars, you get in like sport inspired seats and stuff like that. And you drive 20 minutes and your leg goes numb because yeah. the bolstering is yeah, you know inside your junkie. thigh. So I would say Recaro just because of my experience. I would go with Recaro too. Um, I was looking at seats just for the heck of it. and. It, when I think of Recaro, they, they just have such a cool image. I like the look of the seats. I know obviously it should be how comfortable they are, but they look dope. Sparco to me is like, you're hitting the track, you're like formula dude, you're a drifter, you need the full like encaged seat that wraps around for head protection and stuff. And then to me, um, Bride is like JDM. Like yep. it looks dope, yeah. but I would expect like a Honda NSX or, or a right hand drive Civic Type R or something like, boom, Bride seats, Takata harnesses. Yeah, that's true. That's a route I'd go. Question five comes from Big Boy Motor Blocks. Lifted or slam trucks? Trucks, huh? Lifted or slam trucks? You're like? asking car dudes. I think you know the answer. You just don't want to hear it. I would go slammed. I'd slam it. Drop it. Our shop truck is on the, like not on the ground, but it's lowered and yep. I dig that look. I wish that I could tow stuff with a lower truck like I could with like a normal height truck, but you can't. I'd really like to see a new Tacoma on the ground. Yep. I think that would be cool. Um, but at the same time, you know, trucks, I always think that trucks should have a function because that's the purpose of a truck is right. like, you use it, there's a bed to use it, there's towing capacity to use it. Tow stuff with it. So I'm not a super huge fan of either extreme of like lifting it to the sky and making it absolutely useless yeah. and slamming it to the ground to make it absolutely useless. But that's, that's just me. Yeah, so obviously we're like we're we're the car part of Custom Offsets. Custom Offsets is our truck side, so we're used to seeing all these built, massive, awesome-looking trucks, and they look dope. But obviously, with us being car guys, like it would just be super rad to just slam some sort of a truck. You know what I yeah. mean? Like same thing, like new new Tacoma, stance it out, hella camber gang, and this basically Instagram would hate you for it. So. Everything makes sense until you said hella camber gang. Yeah, that's like uh, that's what the kids are saying, right? I don't know. Okay. Anyways, next. next question. What do you want? Question six comes from Mason Lappin. Golf R or Focus RS? 
You first. I'm gonna drink my coffee while you talk about it. I'm gonna say you already know my answer to this as well. But it, that's a really good question because ideally they are a very similar car, super dope hatchbacks, high horsepower, very similar price point. Uh, the RS has uh, 60, 50, 60 more horsepower, something like that. Golf R is like 293. Yeah. So to, when you look at all the features that come with both cars, it's I think it's a really good bang for your buck. But obviously yeah. the Euro dude in me, I've drove Golf R's, I'm familiar with them, that's what really catapulted me into being like a big Volkswagen mm -hmm. head. Um, I've never drove an RS. I've drove an ST and I, honestly, I, I ideally, I actually really don't like Fords, I'm not a big Ford guy. Sure. Um, but when I did drive an ST, I was like, damn, this thing actually scoots pretty good. So I can imagine the RS just probably rips, you know what I mean? Like, so I think, yeah, between both models, <laughs> <laughs> There's just no way. I can't even. There's just no way. I can't even. So the thing is, is like between the Ford and the Volkswagen is that there's a lot of guys out there that when they talk to us, they're like, we need more domestic variants. You guys need to talk about domestics more because like you're very big Euro guys. And like in this question, I want to answer Ford for the sake of the domestic guys. But between the two cars, I'd still probably say R. And the only reason that I would say that is because I think the R has a little bit more heritage behind it, a little bit more of what I would look for in a car. That's not to say that the RS or even the ST is a bad car. They're actually very, very good cars, but they don't have a lot of the, I would say, reliability or history to see if they last a while. Sure. However, technically speaking, the Golf R really isn't that reliable of a car either because I remember the R32s, those things would always break. Their reliability was absolutely garbage. They rusted super easy. They didn't last very long. Like I remember that time period when people really were like putting money into the R32s. Sure. So I want to say Golf R just for the sake that I I just love Golf and all of their models that they that have. Would be, the sub trims. If and we stuff could set like up that. a video to do that, or if I could drive one, that would be cool. Yeah, I would want to be blown difference. away, but I know because I've drove the R, like yeah. I would go that route. So next question. Question seven comes from Dimitri Roach. Car from out of the country or its U.S. counterpart? So Dimitri's actually a local Wisconsin guy, by the way, because okay. he comments on a lot of our stuff, which is pretty cool. So what's up, Dimitri? What I would name? say a U.S. variant. So this has happened a couple times. There's very few times I'd probably buy an imported version, like a right-hand drive, and that would just be for the sake of having a right-hand drive sure. and then for value. But I know how much of a pain in the butt it is to actually source a lot of imported parts because there are some very small differences between the international version sure. and then the domestic version where like laurels have gotten really popular with, with importing and different older Nissans and stuff like that. But getting those parts, if they break, or reliability and stuff like that, is an absolute nightmare. So if like you can just find the USDM variant, you're probably better off in the long run if you plan to drive the car. If you plan to like hold value and just not drive it and maybe keep it as a collector, right-hand drive, you know, sure. international isn't as, I would say, crazy. But I always just think about how long a car would sit in my garage if it broke. And if it was something from overseas, I know it would sit a hell of a lot longer than if it was a car that was made here. If that's your main show car, yeah, yeah. You're, you're bummed to get parts. And yeah. I've, I've actually heard really good stories about people that have imported them. Yeah. And I went on some of the websites and watched videos and stuff on YouTube of people doing the whole process. And it's it's definitely bragging rights. It's super cool to do something like that. Um, when I was at Eurohanger, they had a Golf R wagon, which I was super excited because I have the Golf R rear uh, spoiler uh, that I've ordered actually from Germany and that's what they have that comes that's on it cool. over there. Yeah. So it was crazy to see that because I kind of had to do a double take mm -hmm. and we've, we've actually seen there's a lot of Honda NSX's right hand drives and stuff that are popping up so it's cool to see people doing that. I Just because I've never done it, it would be cool to go through the process like praying that everything goes smooth. Yeah, you I don't would, get a I car would... that's completely rusted or beat to crap. Yeah. Anyway, next question. Question eight comes from Brian Gankin. Coilovers or new tires and wheels first? On three. I'm gonna do the count on this time though. Okay, yeah, right. I won't mess it up. Yeah. All right, on three. One, two, three. Wheels Coil and overs. tires. It's easy. I already know what he's gonna say because it's Andrew, and by now you're gonna figure out that he's that style, the style guy. I'm a very big wheel and tire guy, and that's honestly that's the most fun thing to shop for. Anybody, I'm sure they would say that, unless yeah. you're like wide body in your car, like. You want to get wheels and tires. It's like getting a new pair of kicks. 
It sets yeah. the tone, the image. And it's for like, your, it's the thing that people see the most. Yeah, you know right what I mean? It's like the most aesthetically pleasing thing when you, you can when do. When you drill on those new wheels and tires and you first like cruise out, yeah. you just, you feel like everyone's yeah. looking at you. I you? even remember doing like the full <laughs> like lock when I got my first set of wheels because I was like, oh, it's going to be a cooler angle at this. <laughs> and then I took a picture with my Note 4 from like the ground and now the pictures little, are terrible. The We're not going to talk about it. But I would not choose that. I would choose coilovers. So for me, I'm a huge fan of seeing fitment on point and a lot of cars have fitment on point if they have coilovers that just lower the body because there are some really killer cars that have really decent wheels oh, yeah, that wheels, once yeah. you put like coilovers on it, it looks killer. 370Zs are probably my go-to. Like they're so concave that OEM really harsh profile front and back and like getting coilovers on that absolutely killer yeah. that would be my that would be my choice yeah if it, it once again vehicle specific you get a dope trim level an m3 uh f sport lexus you know something that has a higher trim level is going to have a nicer wheel than i've seen some cool cars dropped but yeah. ideally you should get wheels and tires at fitmanindustries.com slash wheels or fitmanindustries.com anyway next and we have question. coilovers too <clears throat> question nine comes from christian terraces Ter Tyrannosaurus. Okay, Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> Close. Lifted Miata or lifted Subaru? Lifted Miata, hands down. Miata's best bang for your buck car you can possibly buy. There's nothing wrong. Miatas are great cars. They're not aggressive, they're not sharp, and they're not that fast, but they are a fun, fun, fun car. I've seen a lot of Subarus lifted, which is super cool, but to have, like if you're going out to the dunes or like some back roads or something, and you wanted to go ride around on some ATV trails, illegally in Mexico, yep. it would be so cool to do it Super. in a Miata. It'd be so oh, freaking cool to do it in Miata. So you're, you're gonna bring the hate to the IG oh, if absolutely. you lift a Miata, but it'd be rad to see. And if you're gonna do it, like lift it, monster truck it, put some like crash bars on it, make it look super intense. But I, you, you would just expect a lifted Subaru. I've, I've seen them done super clean. We have an old episode of a Outback we did on yeah. Montagi wheels yep. and BFGs. Like um, we put the link lift. on that at the end. It, it just looked cool. It's just a couple yeah. inch lift, but you, you don't see a lot of lifted ones. Everybody's stancing them and bagging them now. And it's so. refreshing. It's something different. It's yeah. a cool function thing to see any car lifted that has function is awesome. I think like Baja, stuff like that. The Safari RS Porsche is one of my dream cars actually, yeah, is which cool. is a lifted is cool. Porsche. That would be so just awesome to own. I would never do anything to... with it. I don't know where I would drive it off road because there's no place. You to... just go get groceries in it. Yeah. Somebody, somebody left a Miata. Do it really good and send us some footage. Yeah, hit we'll us do up. We'll with do it. a video on it. Last question. Last question one. Question ten comes from Max's Crow. First set of wheels and first car. Do you want to go first? Okay. No. You, um, okay. So, uh, whatever, probably 16, I'm guessing, when I got my first car. It was a 1988 Honda Accord. Uh, I have photos of it somewhere, I'll dig them out. By the time we edit it, we'll put them up here so you can see it. Powder blue, uh, coupe, flip-up headlights. The gauge cluster, very JDM looking, very boxy taillights. The color, pretty hideous. But what made it dope in my little personalization is this is my first got into cars. Fast and Furious, I think, was like, Was out? that even a thing? I think it was out. When were you 16? A long time ago. What you, what year what year were you sixteen? Oh my God, like two thousand, two thousand one. I graduated in 03. Oh my God! I can't do maths right now. You can't. You were sixteen when the Fast and Furious film came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That hit you hard. So uh, so what happened <laughs> is I went to AutoZone and went ham. Remember when we did that video cars. that talked about not going to aisle nine? He went to aisle nine. Yeah. Oh, that's where all the the ricey parts were. I had blue street glow. Uh, lights in the back window that like pulsated and I bought this big, this big roll of chrome trim which we just talked about chrome trim can be ugly and I put it around the wheel wells like very tastefully though not oh, too sure. bad yeah. just, there's some <laughs> accents around the car this is big roll it's like the sticky and you put it down and then oh. I had a chrome muffler tip like a $20 screw on tip and it, was, it looked dope I felt awesome and this is the best part I had a mega bass ESP Sony Walkman with the plug-in tape thing to play all my like DMX and 50 cent tracks I was, I was crushing it. <laughs> it was awesome. I hope you can be, oh, no, my first set of wheels. Motegi MR7's white 17 by seven on 205 4017s on my red Civic. 
that was a Fast and the Furious looking one. I just one. don't. And I have pictures of that too. I just, just don't know awesome. what to say with all of the information that you just provide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, <laughs> just dates you back farther. The more you talk, the farther back that timeline goes. Because what didn't put the what didn't put the nail in the coffin wasn't the wasn't the trim or the light, the pulsating lights. It was the Walkman <laughs> with the tape recorder. Yep. That's when you like, you'd like oh. you roll around with like CD wallets. Good times, good times. My first car was a 1989 Mercedes-Benz 300E. It was a one owner car, we found it at an auction. My stepdad and I used to do a lot of uh, antiquing together and he had found it and uh, it was baby blue with dark blue leather interior, fully loaded, every button possible because back in the late 80s it was all about the buttons. So the headlights, oh, yeah. were, the headlights to, or the, the headrest to go down was a button, but the headrest to come up was a separate button. That's ooh, how many buttons ooh. there were in this thing. Nice. Um, it was a ton of fun. They made a lot of clicking noises. And then they had blocky, like monoblock Mercedes Benz wheels. Actually, they look a lot like the new retro styling coming from Rotiform, those big blocky style oh, sure. wheels. Um, and that was my first car, and I absolutely loved it. I sold it for a 3000 GT, and I instantly regretted it. If I could go back and buy that car, I totally would. Um, and then my first set, oh, by the way, I bought that for $3,000. It was awesome. It was a good deal. Dang. Uh, my first set of wheels was on an Audi A6 C5, 2.7T, six speed. Pew, pew. Say that five times fast. And uh, it was a set of VMR V701s. And I think they're like 18 by eight and a half. Or 18, yeah, 18 by eight and a half. Okay. And uh, yeah, I love those things. They're so cool. They had the gra it was a graphite finish, super dark. I painted the my brake calipers red, and then I painted them purple one time. That I hope was, he has pictures of all this too. We'll I do, out. it's pretty terrible. Um, but then I put in some ST coilovers, and then it actually didn't look that bad. So, but that that was my first. I had terrible wheel gap on both of those cars. That's okay, back in the day though, it wasn't that important. It, wheel gap wasn't a thing back in the day. Yeah. We could go on and on about this. This yeah. is, it just, it was a whole different scene, yeah. so. So those are our 10 things for this That's or that. Yeah. If you guys haven't yet, drop a comment below on what you want to see us talk about next. We appreciate it so much. These videos are probably so much fun we and relaxing it. to do. It's just cool to talk about like different scenes and stuff. But don't forget to subscribe. I'm Alex from Fitment Industries. I'm Andrew. We will catch you guys next time. Peace. Peace.